definitely didn't think this through. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Uh, what's up guys, welcome to the first dark Astro episode in a while. Very excited about that because uh, Astro is one of my favorite things to do. So I have a new lens, as you probably surmised by the title of this, but that whole not thinking it through thing, it's the 16 millimeter RF 16 2.8. Um, it is behind the camera on another camera doing a time lapse. <laughs> so I didn't show it to you guys before I set it up, but we're going to go back to the studio here in a little bit and I will show it to you. Um, and I will also start talking about some weird things about it. While we finish up the time lapse uh, for the 16 millimeter, Canon is touting that this lens is for Astro. Um, I've seen only a couple of reviews of it so far that are out and nobody's done Astro with it. Uh, maybe somebody has, I don't know. But I think with the problems with this lens, it looks like it's not going to be purdy in the corners. We're just going to say that. So a real quick quirk to note about this lens that a lot of people have noticed is that um, first of all, obviously it's a new lens, so there's no corrections in camera raw. So we're going to get some wonkiness because I'm shooting in raw. Um, this lens was designed for the in-body corrections to work, to make this lens optimal. So by default, that's going to be on in your camera. You can't turn it off. Uh, and that means that when you see your JPEGs, they're going to look nice and pretty. And when you see the raw files, you're going to see some weird things. So doing my time lapse should be interesting because there are no fixins yet for Adobe. So I'm going to have to do that myself. Um, we're going to talk about that when we get into camera, when we get into back to the computer, because I haven't seen it yet. I don't know what it's going to do. Um, but from all accounts I've seen from the rest of this, it's pretty sharp in the center. And that's my jam. That's kind of what I care about. I like shooting Astro wider than I need because most lenses, even the good ones, have pretty bad coma. So I typically like to just crop in on that a little bit. So I'm going to show you some examples that we're going to get tonight with the 16. We're going to run through a couple of tests with the 16 millimeters uh, at 2.8 and at f4. And I say f4 because I'm going to compare it to, oh, I'm shooting with it. So I'm filming right now with the 16 to 35 f4, the EF lens. Um, that's been kind of my go-to lens for filming and all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to take a couple of astro shots with that because even though it's f4 and it's kind of slow, I actually really like this lens uh, for astro. It does a really good job. So I want to see how, and it's also the only other 16 that I have. I want to see how it compares to that. Um, maybe, no, we'll just go with the 16 because I have the Rokinon 14, uh, the Samyang 14, but we're just going to compare uh, 16 apples to 16 apples and we'll go from there. So I'm going to get this set up and rather than keep talking out here while everybody freezes, I will see you back in the studio and we're going to go over some examples from this incredibly beautifully clear New Mexico night that you can't see at all yet. <laughs> all right, I'll see you in a second. Okay, tea check. So it's the next morning. I got in kind of late last night and just basically went to bed. <laughs> And now it's 6.30 in the morning because I have sleep issues. <laughs> uh, but we're awake and I have not, the only thing that I've done so far is I rendered the time lapse uh, that you just saw and that was shot with the 16 with this guy. I guess I'll go ahead and show you like interesting fact about this uh, lens is that it's the same uh, body, physical body, as the uh, 50, 1.8. So there's a couple of quirks about it. 
For one, there is the only the single manual focus ring or the single there's a single ring on there and that can be switched for either focusing or as a control ring if you want it set as something else like your ISO or your aperture or something. Um, I never use that on any of my RF things uh, so I'm definitely leaving it as focus. The other quirky thing about it is that if you want it to be manual focus uh, since there's no manual focus to autofocus switch, you have to actually turn it to manual focus uh, in the menu. And I find that uh, interesting. So, I mean, I guess with a lens this size, maybe there wasn't really a way around that. So that's one weird thing. So just remember that when you're doing astro and stuff, you know, you don't want it on autofocus. You want it on manual focus. So you're going to have to go into the menu in your autofocus menu and manually switch it to manual <laughs> uh, inside the camera. And then once that's set, you can turn on your focus peaking or your focus assist to kind of help you uh, if you need that or not. But that's a quirk to be aware of. So there's that. So like I said, um, there is another quirk with this. You know what, let me just show you and we'll get into, let's go straight into uh, Photoshop and we'll start editing. Like I said, I haven't edited any of the images other than that time lapse. Um, so let's go dive into the images and check out the corners and the coma and the center sharpness and see if there's any chromatic aberration and compare them to the 16 and my Samyang 14. I know I said I wasn't going to do that, but I did it anyways. So let's jump into it. Also, one more thing to note about my stupidity is that I forgot to uh, shoot in JPEG also, like, you know, do the RAW and JPEG. Um, I should have done that because that would show the JPEG corrections. So right now we're gonna be looking at only the RAW images, which they look bad when you first start off. And I think that is because, mostly because we don't have the profiles yet, but I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna get around that a little bit if you use. Canon's DPP software, um, which is free and it comes with uh, all the Canon stuff, then they of course have their own profile corrections for this in RAW. So you can you can use that and then export them all to TIFF files, uh, which is not exactly the same as RAW, but it's pretty darn close. Uh, and they're uncompressed files. And then you can edit that in your uh, editor of choice. Mine is Bridge, Camera Raw, and Photoshop. Uh, I don't touch Lightroom with a 10 foot pole. So there's that, um, but we're just gonna be looking at the RAWs and I'm gonna show you just my quick corrections for them right now and see if we can get some decent looking usable images. So the first thing you'll notice right here is that if we take a look at one of these guys, um, you'll notice the extreme vignetting and I mean, that is on the order of probably five stops or more. And you'll notice a little bit of distortion. It's just not looking pretty. Um, you'll also notice that it looks maybe wider than a 16 millimeter. And that's because it is. So Canon designed this lens. The raw images are actually more like... Uh, 14 to 15 ish somewhere in there millimeters and the corrections will crop in a bit um, that is what is going to give you more like that or something so just keep that in mind that people are saying that it crops in a lot um, on the, the JPEG corrections, but it actually crops in to 16 millimeters and that's what Canon designed it for. So with that, let's just uh, get past that and move along here. All right, so aside from the fact that I lit this one with my headlight on the left and this one is not, that's not the big issue here, um, but that was my bad for not being consistent. <laughs> on the left, we have the 16 to 35 f4 
and on the right we have the RF 16 2.8 so here we're looking at a hundred percent and we're looking at the center um, there's a slight difference in luminance value there because of the lenses um, but we're looking at 20 seconds f4 so the center is looking pretty good this is the center of the 16 to 35 we can start seeing as we go out to the edges we can start seeing a little bit of coma and that's where the stars are stretching we don't see too much chromatic aberration or any at all really just a, a very bit very small bit uh, but now we're looking at just the complete edges here so we can see the Pleiades in both of these uh, they're both pretty good at a hundred percent and again we're not looking at noise or anything um, this was shot at ISO 6400 on my R6 so the noise isn't what we're looking at we're looking at star detail uh, and they both look pretty similar so now let's go to the edges so now we're on the top right edge um, this is where you're noticing for one the severe I mean this detail right here in this upper right hand corner is completely gone like those blacks are crushed uh, and again that's basically because this is like 14 millimeters out you can also see here on this coma um, there's a bit more pronounced chromatic aberration, but it's still, you know, surprisingly, I'm not seeing a lot. I think that's the Triangulum Galaxy right there. I think and Andromeda is right up there. So that is actually a galaxy, and that's pretty cool. But we are seeing a bit of coma on the edges. And, you know, here we're seeing a lot more chromatic aberration on the edges as well. But let's come back out. And again, going straight back in, this is 100%. I mean, that's looking pretty good. And like I said, look at, let's look at the mountains here. Uh, the silhouettes look good. The silhouette of the tree looks good. You know, overall, I would say if you back it out and look at this, here's the Milky Way, here's the Pleiades. I would say, I would say I'm actually fairly happy with this. Uh, and again, this is the raw. So let's look at a couple of others and see. Here is the 16 to 35. Um, and of course it looks like a slightly better image because um, it's got less distortion inherently and because this tree is lit up so it actually makes it look a little sharper and it actually kind of is just a pinch sharper I think alright so let's take a look at this real quick uh, this image here on the right is wide open at f2.8 And this image right here is at f4, so stopped down just a little bit. And in the center, we're not seeing that much difference uh, at all in terms of sharpness. So that's good. Uh, wide open, we're looking pretty good. So yeah, we can see definitely wide open, we're getting way worse coma actually towards the edges. Uh, and then stopping it down to f4 is tightening it up a little bit and if you were to stop down again to 5.6 uh, you would probably see even more reduced coma but you know we don't like to shoot at 5.6 in astro that's for sure so stopping down definitely helps quite a bit let's take a look at this real quick just for example to show you what i'm talking about about the wide um, on the left we have the Samyang 14 millimeter uncorrected so we can see that this here uh, where this tree is sticking out you notice on the right we have the 16 millimeter 2.8 uh, it is 
a little bit wider than this 14 actually. So then here, this by comparison real quick is the 16 to 35 millimeters at 16. So you'll notice that if we were to crop in on this one here, just to where this branch sticks out, that is actual 16. So we're seeing how much wider than 16 this really is from the raw image. So without those digital corrections. So let's go back into bridge. I'm going to grab one of these 16 millimeter uh, images and I'm going to edit it. All right. So here's one from the RF 16 millimeter. This is at F4. So I did stop it down a little bit. You can see ISO 6400 and 20 seconds shutter speed. So the first thing I'm going to do is go in here to the optics. Like I said, we don't have the profile corrections on. So I'm going to come in here, or we don't have profile corrections at all. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to pick something that's similar rather than do it manually. I'm going to come in here and pick 16 to 35 uh, EF 2.8 Mark III. So you can see that did a lot of good for uh, the distortion there. And that helped a bit with the vignetting on the sides, although it's not great. We can still increase this vignetting a little bit. And it's not perfect. Again, this isn't the right lens. Uh, but without doing the distortion correction yourself, I think this does a pretty good job. What it doesn't do is crop in at all. So I'm going to do that later. But for now, I'm just going to go through here and tweak this and edit it a little bit. And then we'll bring it into Photoshop. Alright, so I just went ahead and edited that a little bit in Camera Raw. So now I'm going to come crop this uh, just a little bit. Alright, so that's just kind of a first pass quick edit. Uh, I didn't do too much to it. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit more actually. Real quick. This None of this is important to the video uh, or showing what the lens can do, but this is just seeing if I can get what I want out of this image. Uh, because, you know, I'm not a reviewer. I don't review things just for the sake of showing you only what you can get out of the lens or the camera or the gear or whatever stock as it is, you know, raw. I'm a photographer and I'm going to show you what I can get out of this. So I'm going to show you my finished edit here in just a minute. I just want to clean it up just a little bit more. All right, so there is the final image that is uh, just completely edited how I would normally edit my shots. Um, I think it's pretty nice. You know, I think once we crop in and get rid of some of that coma, stopping down definitely helped. This was the shot that I did that was F4. So we're seeing a lot of decent things overall. Personally, I think I can definitely make usable astro images out of this as long as you know the quirks of the lens that you're getting into and you shoot accordingly. You know, the one more thing that I'm going to do, um, and I'll show you guys real quick. I'm not going to show you how I'm doing it because uh, I have plenty of tutorials on that, but I'm going to go ahead and make a star trail shot out of the time lapse that I did. So I'm going to show you that as soon as I edit it real quick. All right, well, that came out okay. The time lapse wasn't in the best position for star trails, um, but it's still an interesting image, I guess. Uh, definitely not portfolio worthy, but that's composition and that's subjective.
<laughs> so I definitely think that looking at the edited images um, or image that I did, the one that's not the star trail, that's to me personally, that's a totally usable image. And I'm fairly confident that I will be able to get more images of the style that I like out of this. I'm definitely going to be using it more for Astro. Um, I'm going to be, this was a, and this Astro shot was a single image. It was not stacked or tracked or any of that. And I will be doing that in the future with this lens, as well as a bunch of other lenses uh, coming up this fall and this winter. I'm pretty excited about that kind of stuff. So I'm definitely going to be using this lens more for Astro. And of course, uh, next summer, you know, we missed the Milky Way with the release of this lens by about a month, uh, a month and a half at best. And that's kind of a bummer, but I will be getting out next summer with this lens and testing it more. And then all through the winter, I'm going to be creating some more Astro stuff with it so stick around if you're interested in that and let me know what you thought uh, do you think this is a usable image um, maybe hopefully this will show you some of the pitfalls against one also uh, once adobe updates their profiles um, for this lens i think it's going to be a lot better for use in raw and then of course like i said earlier using dpp canon's software you can do all of this stuff but have the actual distortion the lens distortion corrections for this lens in dpp and then you can edit your tiffs or your jpegs from there however you want to go but i just wanted to give a first look at this lens uh, and just see what it looks like straight out of camera and most importantly like i said earlier too to see what i can do with it uh, to see if it'll fit my needs for the astro stuff and i think it will it's not the best lens in my bag um, but with a little cleaning, a little fixings, I think it does just fine. I will also be testing this lens out here pretty soon because I did buy it for vlogging and for like super light vlogging style. So I will be testing the video aspect of this lens out here pretty soon. So keep an eye out for that too. And that's it. I'm going to wrap it up. It is definitely second breakfast time. So if you have any questions about the lens or about anything that I went over or didn't go over concerning how I edited it, how I edited it, or cleaned it up, or any of that stuff, leave those in the comments below and I will definitely answer them. Hit that like button if this video helped you out because that's the best thing you can do for my channel and I super appreciate it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.